Donald E. Knuth presents a simple proof of Tamari's theorem. The set of binary trees with n nodes forms a lattice under a one-way associative law. As a consequence of the associative law, the product of AB times C is equal to the product of A and BC. Any two ways of parenthesizing a formula are equal when variables appear in the same order from left to right. Using the one-way associative law, the product of AB times C can be rewritten as the product of A and BC. This can be construed as a reduction yielding a right-hand side less than the left-hand side. After presenting a simple encoding of binary trees, Knuth defines an ordering on the encodings. Right rotating a tree increases its encoding with respect to the ordering. The relation and the encodings yield a simple, non-distributive lattice on binary trees. The title of my talk today is, uh, is called The Associative Law. Um, I guess you have to come to a computer science lecture in order to hear a lecture about the associative law because it's so basic in mathematics everyone uh, uh, stops talking about the associative law in high school in mathematics. In computer science, we're still uh, interested in it. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, it's one of the, I'm going to try to, try to, to uh, make you all thrilled about the associative law today. Huh? Um, in general, when I'm giving these, when I'm giving these talks, uh, they're based on things that I encounter as I'm preparing for volume four of the art of computer programming. Um, uh, but today is something that really um, belongs in volume one, in a sense that if I had known about the things I'm talking about today when I was uh, in the 60s, when I was writing the first volume, I would certainly have put them in there because, that, because that's where we introduced the concept of binary trees. Um, uh, you know, computer, computer scientists, uh, one of the most important um, data structures that we use all the time is binary trees. And, uh, and so, uh, of course, binary trees got right into the to the first volume of my books, and uh, and uh, um, computer scientists, well, we love binary trees. Let's face it, binary trees are beautiful. There's something that uh, that hadn't been hadn't been studied in great detail in mathematics, but uh, but for, for, but but uh, the more we, we we learn about computer applications, the more we uh, the more we're happy. We know more facts about binary trees. Now, the, the facts that I'm, that I'm going to talk about are, are some things that, that are true about binary trees that I didn't know 30 years ago, okay, or I didn't know, in fact, until, uh, until this summer. Um, uh, uh, I knew, I knew uh, that, that some of these theorems were true, but I, but I, I was unable to understand the proofs. The, the, um, um, the main things that I'm going to be talking about today uh, actually were proved by a... Uh, a French mathematician named Tamari, Dove Tamari, in his PhD thesis, and I think it was like 1953. Um, and then he and um, uh, another French mathematician, Haya Friedman, published in the early 60s a uh, simplified proof, but it was still very complicated, and, and, uh, and I always thought I would put it on my list of things to understand someday, but it was so long and complicated, I. I I never was able to uh, uh, get up the courage to do it. Well, then <clears throat> Tamari and Huang in the early 70s um, found a simpler proof yet. And so that proof was actually just a few pages long. And uh, if I had known about it, I would have, in fact, uh, read it uh, uh, instead. But I didn't know about that simpler proof until this summer. So then when, this summer, when I looked at their simpler proof, it occurred to me, oh, but wait, I can make it really simple and nice, and, and, and that's when I decided to, uh, uh, to give this talk. So, uh, um, but what, what am I talking about? Well, okay, so first of all, uh, a binary tree, um, we know, is a, is a, uh, it is, is something which has nodes, and each node has either, has, has two things coming out of it, um, or none. So this one has none coming out, and this has two. And, and we can we can string these <coughs> we can string these out in various ways. Now, um, uh, 
the um, when, when I talk about n in this in this lecture, n is going to be the number of of the um, of the nodes that have two things coming out. These are the internal nodes of a binary tree. Um, there's also external nodes, and there's always n plus one external nodes, and that's where we can hang data. Uh, we can also put data in internal nodes, but uh, you know, uh, well, we do everything uh, depending on the application. Um, <clears throat> now, um, the, the a lot of algorithms based on binary trees um, use the idea of, of a rotation. Let me see. Let, let me give a more general binary tree here, uh, slightly more general. Um, uh, so let's actually I should let you write one for me so that um, so that you so that's not pre-planned but um, I mean uh, but I, I do have a good one in mind well what the heck let's just take a cut let's just draw a few more okay there's a binary tree how many does how many nodes does it have uh, one two three four five six seven eight okay now now the uh, um, the idea of a rotation in a binary tree is uh, that we that we have a, a substructure that looks like this. There's some tree alpha hanging down here, and some tree beta hanging down there, and some tree gamma down here. These might be uh, uh, complicated, or they might be simple. They might be empty. Alpha, beta, gamma might be empty. Anyway, this if we if we um, uh, convert this into into the binary tree that looks like this with alpha here, beta and gamma here. Then uh, we call this a rotation to the right. And then if we if I move the arrow in the other way, it's a rotation to the left. Okay. Now this is the most this is the, this is the simplest thing you can do to a binary tree and get another binary tree with the same number of nodes in it. And it also has a great property that it, that the um, that the order of nodes in, in symmetric order doesn't change. Now, the symmetric order of nodes of a, of a of a binary tree is when we read them from left to right. You know, this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight. Um, you the binary what, what you do is you you first read the the things to the left of the root in in symmetric order, then you read the root, then you read everything to the right in in symmetric order. Or if we projected all of these things down without any lines crossing, it would be the order in which the, in, in which they hit the horizon. Um, and you see that uh, that in this tree, um, if alpha, uh, you know, alpha comes first, then beta, then gamma in the symmetric order, and the same in this in this on the right. Uh, so you know, in a lot of applications, we'll have the, the numbers, the data in the tree will be numbers that are in increasing order in symmetric order. Uh, so this is a fundamental operation that's often used to balance a tree, to make a tree uh, uh, so that all the leaves are are as close to the, uh, uh, you know, um, that the number of levels is small if we want, or, or in some cases we like to unbalance the tree and get the number of levels large. Anyway, whatever. Um, now, you, you, now, we also use binary trees to, to represent algebraic expressions. And so uh, if I put... Uh, if I put letters on the bottom here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, uh, then this would be an algebraic expression that says we want to multiply B by C, and then we want to multiply that by A, and then we want to multiply that thing by D, E, and then we want to multiply the whole business times the right subtree, which is F, G, H times I, right? That's a kind of a mess, but that's, the, that's another... You know, so this represents an algebraic formula. In that case, if you see what happens to this, what this rotation means, the rotation says that alpha, beta, gamma is being rotated over into alpha, beta, gamma. So here's, this is why I call this talk the associative law. Okay, the associative law is the is application of uh, a changing of um, ch changing a formula that has binary operator. Uh, from this form to this form is is uh, to mathematicians is the associative law changing the parentheses to computer scientists it, it means rotating uh, the binary tree. Now I drew this here as if 
as if the node on the top where the rotation is taking place is the root of the tree. That, it doesn't have to be true. You can do a rotation anywhere in the middle of a tree. So I could rotate, for example, uh, well, almost anywhere in the middle of a tree, anywhere that, um, uh, that you have a, uh, that I have a, a, a substructure. I, I couldn't rotate here because A is not a node. A is just a, a leaf. But, um, but if I wanted to rotate here, for example, then this one would come, then this one would come up and this would move down. B would, um, so, so what would happen? A would come up, B, C would attach itself to this, um, to this guy and so on. So we would rotate, uh, that would be taking this part of the thing and, 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 and putting the B, C over with the D, E. Applying the associative law in the middle of the formula. So you don't have to apply the associative law only at the top. Okay, now, um, <clears throat> Interesting thing, though, is when we talk about an, a one-way associative law, instead of saying that the associative law is, is in equality, let's say that instead um, uh, the arrow, there's, there's a definite thing, thing that, that this one, uh, we might say, is um, unstable and wants to go to this one. Okay? Um, now, this, would, this defines not an equality of, of expressions, but an inequality of, of expressions. In fact, I'll, I'll want to... Um, um, I want to regard this one as larger than this one. We're going to define a, an ordering on binary trees where, where, where this one's going to be a small tree, this is going to be a large tree. And, and if we ever do a rotation uh, to the right, it's going to make it larger. And then the, you know, going the other way would make it smaller. So, so, uh, um, so it turns out that we get a nice, uh, nice ordering between binary trees when we when, when we consider one-way associative law. This um, uh, I, I I ran across this first when I was uh, when I was playing with something that got to be called the knuth bendix algorithm, where where we're where we're trying to uh, uh, to to derive consequences of axioms, and uh, and uh, the idea is that you want to prove that two things. If you want, to, you want to decide whether two formulas can be proved equal uh, based on a certain number of axioms. And the knuth bendix algorithm sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. When it does work, it gives you a set of, of reductions of one-sided um, uh, transformations that you make. And the, the, the idea is that uh, once you've got these reductions, you apply the reductions over and over again to both sides of the formula that you wish to prove or, or equal or not. If and you keep on doing this, um, and it, it turns out that, that the, uh, it'll never get into a loop. So each side will reduce to a particular uh, form where no reductions apply anymore. Then, um, then the two things are equal if and only if the reduced formula on the left is, is equal to the reduced formula on the right. So this gives a simple way to test whether, you, whether it's possible to prove equality of two formulas. Now, if the only axiom that you're given to the knuth bendix system, if you're, the only axiom that you, that you give is the associative law, um, uh, ABC equals A times quantity BC, um, then uh, the Bendix algorithm grinds out one reduction, and this is the reduction it grinds out. And so it says that you can prove that two formulas are equal by the associative law, if and only if they reduce to the same thing, which means that uh, uh, if I keep on replying this, uh, applying this operation over and over again to some tree, eventually I get to a tree that can't be reduced anymore. And uh, then you, and then when you have two trees in that form, then then they're equal if and only if. Uh, it, it, you know, it, uh, it, one of the things that uh, when I first learned the associative law in in high school, um, it wasn't immediately. You know, I, I was given that A B C is equal to A times B C, but uh, one of the things I would have to prove is maybe that uh, A times B C quantity times D E um, is this equal to. Um, uh, you know, some messy thing, uh, well, let's see, AB times CD times E. And how would you prove that this was equal to this? And you, you're allowed to use this kind of operation. A, B, and C are, 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 are uh, variables, not constants. Um, and, uh, uh, well, you could play, you could, you could fiddle around and get from one to the other, uh, but um, the easiest way is to, uh, is to keep is to keep using one-way reductions instead of going from left to right all the time. Just take this all the way down until finally this becomes A times B times C times DE uh, in a sequence of, 
of reductions, and this also becomes A times B times C times D in sequence of reductions. And so these are equal, and these are equal, therefore the original formulas were equal. Well, that's, uh, so, so that's one special case of smooth bending algorithm. Um, any of you interested in pursuing what I'm talking about today further, I've got some conjectures that maybe this is going to all generalize to arbitrary axiom systems that for which the knuth bandix algorithm works. Um, but let's stick with the simplest case now, this one side of the associative law. Okay, so we got a, we got an ordering on binary trees, and we'll say that, that this tree is bigger than this tree. Um, and uh, whenever, whenever I, I do a rotation, um, I get an ordering. Now, the theorem that Tamari proved in his PhD thesis in the early 50s was that the partial ordering is actually a lattice. Uh, a, a lattice means that, it, that uh, the ordering is, is kind of nice. Uh, it, it, you can take uh, greatest lower bounds and least upper bounds in the ordering. This, uh, this means that if I have, if I have uh, uh, two, two trees, uh, T1 and T2, uh, then I can compute the, um, for example, a, 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 another tree, T3, that is greater than or equal to T, that's heavier, let's say larger than or equal to T1 and T2 both, and it's the smallest uh, that's larger than both of them. So anything that's larger than T1 and T2 is also um, larger, than T, larger than or equal to T3. Um, and conversely, anything larger than or equal to T3 is, is larger, is, is, is uh, that for, for T2. It's, it's clear that this, this relation of, of greater than on trees is is transitive. If, if I can get from, from one tree to another by a sequence of, of, uh, of uh, rotations, uh, and I can get from that second one to a third one by more rotation, then I can get from the first to the third just by continuing doing the, the rotation. So, so the, the interesting thing was, though, that there is actually a, uh, um, uh, a least uh, element that's greater than or equal to two. And similarly, for less than or equal, it, uh, it, it forms a lattice and, uh, it means that I can also take greatest lower bounds, so, so that there would be some other tree that's less than or equal to both T1 and T2, and um, and any and it's the largest of all those that are less than or equal. Okay, well now, uh, but 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 the hard thing was proving that. Um, how would you and and uh, not only that, but how would you intuit? How, how would you understand, uh, given two trees, what's the what are the trees that uh, um, that are 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 greater than it uh, are, are are greater than both of them, um, but but as small as possible, being greater than both of them. Um, and uh, and how on earth would you compute the, their their uh, uh, least upper bound? In lattice, when we have a lattice operation, um, we usually um, call it the meet and the join. Uh, uh, this, this is not the same as a join in database theory, but the meet is the is, is going smaller and the join is going larger. Um, and, uh, and so the meet of two elements of a lattice is written this way and the join is written this way. And uh, uh, well, we'll talk more about lattices in a minute. First, let me, let me uh, show you um, how, we're going to, uh, how we're going to go from binary trees in a natural way to understand what this partial ordering is. So this is the join <coughs> and this is the meet. And, and this is le this this is the least uh, uh, this is the greatest lower bound. This is the least upper bound on on two things in a lattice. Okay, let's um, now now what I'm going to do is I'm going to encode a binary tree in a very simple way, um, uh, and it probably was in volume one. We get at every at every um, uh, node, I'm going to write down the number of nodes in the right subtree. So here, there's one here. There's zero here, zero here. Here there is one node in the right subtree. How many here? One, two, three, uh, zero, one, zero. Now, the encoding for that tree is, uh, is it, we read off these numbers in uh, the symmetric order from left to right. So that would be one, zero, one, zero, three, one. Zero zero. It should be eight. If there's a, if there's eight, if there's n nodes, there's going to be a, n numbers here. And and this is the so so here they are the the right subtree sizes. And this is an encoding um, that uh, 
that, that, that anyway, I, I can take any binary tree and get these numbers. Now, suppose that uh, I just had those numbers, but uh, somebody covers up the tree and says, what, what, you know, what was that tree? Can I reconstruct it? Okay, well, <clears throat> these are the right subtree sizes of the nodes in, in, um, in increasing order. So uh, how am I going to think, how am I going to figure out what's going to happen? Well, for example, this node here has three, it, it means that there are three other nodes. Uh, in fact, the, the next three have to be its right subtree. So, so the next three nodes after this one are going to be the uh, are, are going to be the, uh, uh, the the subtree numbers. Uh, but these, I, I can draw this arrow here covering three guys to the right, saying that these are going to be in the subtree under this one. Similarly, this this one says that this is the, it sort of protects that zero here. This one is going to cover this zero. This one's going to go like that. Now, <clears throat> so um, uh, I claim that the, that the root of the tree is going to have to be this one, and that these and, and that these are two subtrees that 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 sort of hang off to the left. In other words, given a sequence of these numbers, we can we can always convert it into blocks like this, where we draw from every from every um, number, uh, we go. We cover that many guys to the right, and um, and uh, and these these are going to nest. Uh, they're never going to. There's never going to be an arrow coming out from under here into another one. You see, I, I couldn't have a two sitting here because that would mean that somebody would have a subtree of two things. But the, but 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 this would all have to be part of the subtree of of the of the three. Okay. Well, um, now why is it true that uh, that this has to be the root of the tree. Well, um, because this one, because um, um, if somebody if, if somebody included this as this as a subtree, it would have to have more than three nodes in it, and three is the biggest number. So that's that. Well, that was too easy. Um, if I if I started out with 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 a, with a more complicated example, but the largest number isn't always the isn't always the root of the tree, but uh, in this particular case it is. So anyway, that, that identifies three has to be the root of the tree. Then, then, then for the right subtree, I have to do a one zero zero. Now, how do I figure out the one zero zero? That's a, not um, so. That's going to be the subtree that goes over here. And um, well, one zero zero. Um, uh, somehow I'm going to have to figure out that zero is the root of that, and. One and the other one zero is the left subtree, and so the left subtree will look like that. And, uh, and similarly for the one zero one zero, we're going to figure out that that turns out to be um, that, that the root turns out to be a one zero, and that to the left of that is another one zero. Did I get it right? Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, now how how does the theory work? Okay. So anyway, these these numbers. Um, it's, not, it's not really very hard to figure out that you can reconstruct a tree from these numbers, but let's, th let's take a look at what the numbers are. So there's a sequence of numbers, R1 through R sub n. These are the right subtree counts. And um, what are the conditions that they satisfy? Well, the first condition they satisfy is that R sub k is less than or equal n minus k. <coughs> In other words, Rn has to be 0. Rn minus 1 has to be 0 or 1. R1 has to be between 1 and n minus 1, uh, between 0 and n minus 1. Um, now, um, well, that's clear because the, the uh, everything in the right subtree, th there are n minus k guys to the right. And so, and if Rk represents the number of, uh, of people in the right subtree, they all lie to the right, then uh, n minus k can only happen if, uh, uh, if you're using everybody to the right, so this is a, this is an obvious condition that has to be true. Um, now, that's necessary. Another another condition is a little trickier, but uh, also true, and that is if R K is is equal to J, that means that we have uh, J guys in the right subtree. That means I was going to draw an arrow past the next J things. Then <coughs> Then um, R k plus one is less than or equal j minus one, 
and RK plus J is less than or equal to um, zero. And RK plus two is less than or equal to J minus two, and so on. <clears throat> now, um, well, that's what I said when I, after I drew an arrow from this guy to three guys to the right, then the three, then the next three numbers had to be such that, that their arrows aren't going to protrude past the, the arrow that's, that's, that's above them. Um, another way to say that is the, is the next J numbers, RK plus one up to RK plus J, these are the numbers for some, for the right subtree of, of node K. And uh, so they have to be a, a, a proper sequence um, uh, as if, it, you know, if I put a box around them, these would have to, these would have to be the, the R coding of, of some subtree. And so that would have to satisfy condition one. And condition one would, would say that the first one is less than J minus one, the next one is less than J minus two, and so on, because N is, is equal to J in that case. So this is just saying, <clears throat> so, so in other words, condition one was obvious, condition two is secondary obvious, uh, that would say that, uh, you know, it's, it's a special case, for, it, it, it follows from condition one when I look at subtrees. And so you might say, well, then I'm going to have to go to condition three, which talks about sub-subtrees and, 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 uh, and, and keep on going. But turns out, no, just these two conditions are necessary and sufficient. That is, if we have these, if we have these two, these conditions, then we can, re then, then we can always reconstruct the tree. Now, you can, you can also um, put this in, into another form, another equivalent form. So, so uh, condition two is, is also the same as saying, if... <coughs> Um, one less than or equal to um, i is less than or equal to r sub k, then r sub k plus uh, I've got a plan ahead here. I forget the if. One less than or equal i less than or equal r sub k implies r sub k plus i is less than or equal to r sub k. <coughs> Minus i, isn't that right? Yeah, r sub k minus i, and so I, I might as well use zero. forget this because it, it works for i to zero as well. Okay, so this is the condition that r k plus one is less than or equal to r k minus one, and r k plus two, uh, and so on, uh, going up to up to that. So here's another an, another way to to say this, uh, this, con <coughs> this second condition. But it really means that I just look at the next J numbers and, uh, and they have to form a, an encoding sequence too. So they have to satisfy analogous properties to, to the whole sequence. <coughs> okay, so now um, if we do that, now, now I want to say, now I, I can, if, I, if I have numbers that satisfy this, I can construct a binary tree uh, uniquely that um, that has these as the sizes of the right subtrees. Okay. Well, um, I won't go through a formal proof. Uh, it's intuitive, but uh, we get the idea that we that th there is a largest value of k for which the equality. I mean, sorry, a smallest value of k for which equality holds. Um, uh, it certainly holds true for k equals n. The last guy is always zero. And that there might be earlier ones where r sub k equals n minus k. In that case, I take the fir very first k, and that's going to be the root of the tree. And um, and so and, and so then um, uh, it, 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 so in other words, take k to be minimum for which k is minimum for which r k equals n minus k. And then I, um, then I have r k sitting here, and then I have n numbers here. And I, and I want to prove that these two guys are going to represent the left subtree and the right subtree of the binary tree. So, so um, the numbers on the right are going to satisfy conditions one and two because condition two reduces to condition one um, in the case, in, in, in that particular case, and condition two still holds in the substring if it holds in the string. Um, on the left hand side, I have to show, I have to show that R um, uh, three, for example, is is um, 
less than or equal. I have to show that condition one holds in the left-hand side. So I have to show that R3 is less than or equal to K minus, let's see, I've got K minus one guys here. So that would be K minus one minus three. I'd have to show that R3 is less than or equal to, I have to show that R0, R1 is less than or equal to K minus two, R2 is less than K minus three, R3 is less than K minus four, and so on, up to RK minus one is, is zero. Um, now, how would I show that R3 is less than or equal um, K minus 1 minus 3? Well, if not, um, uh, uh, because what, um, R, um, well, let's see, um, okay, so R3 plus K minus three. If it, it, it if not, if R three were, you know, if not, then it would be uh, like, uh, in, you know, uh, then it, then it would be K minus three or more. So then I could talk about R three plus K minus three, and I could call J, uh, or I mean, this would be I. Um, so, so then K minus three is less than or equal is is less than or equal to R three, and then. So I apply a, I k minus three. This is R three, and so then it would say that R sub k minus three. Uh, sorry, R sub uh, three plus k minus three is less than or equal to R three minus I. <clears throat> um, and um, uh, but that's less than or equal to um, n minus 3 minus k minus 3. Um, so let me see, what am I doing here? Well, this is equal n minus k, but this is rk. Yeah, R K is this, and this is N. Okay, so this is N minus. This is equal to N minus K. Uh, so um, this is equal to R K again, by by, by my assumption. Uh, so equality has to hold everywhere, and uh, this would this would imply in particular that R three was equal to N minus three. Um, but I assumed that K was the minimum. Okay, long proof, but that proved that that proves that this works. So if you have conditions one and two, you can always construct a tree from them. And the tree, the, the, that was the only tree that, that, that does it too. So you see that that's, that's unique. Okay. Now, let's look at what a rotation does. What, what, a, what does a rotation do in this encoding scheme? So suppose I have a rotation and I got R things here, which means that, uh, that gamma has R guys in it. Uh, R, R nodes are, are, are in gamma. And suppose I have Q here. So, so there were there were Q um, internal nodes in beta. And now I, I, I rotate that, and I get another tree with alpha here and beta gamma here. Now, in, inside alpha and beta, nothing is happening to the sizes of their right subtrees. If this is in, in the middle of some bigger tree, nothing has happened to the size of anybody else's right subtree either. Uh, but what hap what's happening now? The size of this subtree. How many how many uh, nodes are there? Um, well, there's Q here, R there, one more there. So that's Q plus R plus one. And this is still R. It's still for, still gamma. So so what's happened in, in in a rotation is that exactly one of the subtree counts has gone up. And it went up from Q to Q plus R plus one, which is definitely bigger, okay? So certainly, if I have, um, if I have some um, uh, row represents a, uh, some tree, and, and then I rotate, uh, this goes to, uh, 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 let's say row goes to row prime, then this is true. Then it's true that rho is less than or equal to rho prime component-wise. 
the, the, let me use this less than or equal. On a, a row here is going to stand for a sequence of numbers, like 1, 0, 1, 0, 3, 1, 0, 1. Uh, and I, I do a rotation, any rotation whatsoever in that tree. Whatever I get, I'm going to get something that component-wise, the first component is, is less of, of row is less than the first component of row prime, second component less than or equal, and so on. In fact, it's going to be equal everywhere except in one place. Um, but so it's, it's quite clear then if I do a sequence of rotations, then, I, then, then it stays component-wise larger. Okay? Um, now, the, the beautiful thing, and otherwise I wouldn't have given this talk, is that it's also, it, it also is, is true the other way. In other words, it, um, uh, rho is less than or equal to rho prime, or, or let's say um, uh, 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 rho rotates uh, with a star in here that says, I, I, a star means that I, I apply a rotation zero what times, one time, two times, any number of times. Um, if and only if um, it is component-wise less than, in its it, uh, w when I when I read the numbers. So if I look at the if I look at the um, encoding of of any two binary trees, and I compare them, uh, I I compare R1 to R1 prime, R2 to R2 prime, and so on. If I if I always get less than or equal, then I could get the the second tree from the first by by doing rotations only to the right. But if any one of them is less, I obviously couldn't. Now, now one, one way is obvious. It's, it's this way. It's in a rotation always increases. But now you have to show the other way, that if I take any two binary trees and one is bigger than the other, then there's, there is a way to actually rotate the guy in, into the other one. I'll prove that in a minute. Um, we'll, we'll first derive some consequences of it and see, see why that's interesting. But that... But that um, <coughs> Uh, is is a fact, and we'll soon see why it's true. And that and and so this is a very nice characterization. You just look at these at these right subtree numbers, and then and, and this and, and, and as we first saw, knowing the right subtree numbers is enough to know the tree. And secondly, if you know the right subtree numbers <coughs> of two trees, you can tell whether one is less than or equal to the other. Uh, one is obtainable from the other by rotations or not. It's just uh, just look at the at at at, uh, at them component wise, and each component has to be greater than or equal. Um, okay, but now um, we can also get a corollary, <coughs> and that is um, the 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 join or the meet. I'm sorry, of two trees is equal to um, the minimum of the two component wise. If I take if I take the encoding of two different bi binary trees, and if I take the minimum component by component, independent of anything else, um, I claim I get the encoding of a binary tree, and then therefore it would have to be um, it would have to uh, 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 be the 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 um, greatest lower bound. Okay, let's see why that is. First of all, suppose I have sequence then R1, R2. Rn and another another one R2 prime. So these are two these are two encodings of of um, binary trees. So so it's equivalent to saying a binary tree is, is given by by a sequence of numbers. This is rho. This is rho prime. And um, and so uh, so this satisfies conditions one and two. Our prime satisfies conditions one and two. Now I just want to show that minimum that the minimum of uh, of the two minimum of R1 R1 prime up to minimum of Rn, Rn prime, that this sequence also satisfies conditions one and two. If, if I can show that it satisfies conditions one and two, then, it's, then it represents a binary tree. Okay? So, well, that, that's obvious. I mean, um, take, take condition one. Rk is less than or equal to this. R prime, Rk prime is less than or equal to this, so the minimum is certainly less than. Um, on, on the other hand, here let's suppose that um, R K is um, is it, it, you know um, well I, I got I can do it in this form. So suppose I is less than or equal to the minimum of R K and R K prime. Then I have to show that the minimum of this is less than or equal to the minimum on the right hand side. But the um, 
But, uh, well, it's, it's, it's obvious. I mean, the minimum of um, RK plus I and RK plus I prime is <coughs> less than or equal to the minimum of R, RK um, <coughs> minus I and RK prime minus I. Because if you take the minimum of two things, this one is less than or equal to this, this one is less than or equal to this. And this is just the minimum of RK, RK prime minus I. <coughs> so um, condition two holds as well. So in other words, if, if these two conditions hold, then so does, so does, uh, uh, it also holds for the minimum. It doesn't hold for the maximum. We'll talk about the maximum in a minute, but it certainly holds for the minimum. Okay, so so in other words, this is a, this is a simple operation now to do component-wise on any two encodings, and it and it and it gives us another tree. So so that's a binary tree. The significance of that binary tree is it is less than or equal to this one, and it's less than or equal to this one. Therefore, this binary tree will rotate into this one and this one. It's a it's a it's a common less than or equal to both of them, and. Uh, it's the largest such because if anybody is less than both of them, it has to be less than or, it has to be less than or equal this one. This is the biggest we could possibly get, uh, and anything else uh, less than both of them uh, would have to be less than or equal to the minimum of the two guys. So that's the uh, that's the proof that there is a greatest lower bound. I haven't proved this, I haven't proved the, the other side of this of this law, but as soon as I prove that, then I've got a greatest lower bound. Um, to get uh, uh, to get a least upper bound, we do the same thing, but uh, uh, we we use uh, 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 left subtree encoding instead of right subtree encoding, and then we take the minimum of those. And 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 if you take the if, so, so so there's a duality between left and right. If you switch left and right, then less than goes to greater than. Left rotation goes to to, to right rotation. So it's flip left and right. You get um, you get an equivalent theorem, and um, you taking the minimum of those encodings will give you um, a, 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 a left a left subtree encoding for for a tree, and that will be um, uh, less than or equal to in the in, in the dual version. So it's greater than or equal in the other one. So so, so we can compute the the least upper bound uh, in a similar way, but using left subtree sizes instead of right subtree sizes. Now, I still have to prove this uh, uh, this fact here, and uh, uh, it's not it's not hard. Um, now I'm going to I'm going to work on another problem. So I'm going to erase this. I'm going to say suppose this is less than or equal to this, but not equal. And I'm going to so now I'm going to try to prove I'm going to try to prove this direction. I'm going to try to prove. If, that I, if I have two, two sequences, this one less than or equal this one, then I'm going to prove that I can rotate this tree into this tree, uh, that, that there is a rotation. So let's suppose that R1 equals R1 prime until we get RK minus 1 equals RK minus 1 prime. But then we have a, a, a definite less than situation. Um, and then after that, um, Rk plus 1 is less than or equal Rk plus 1 prime, and so on up until Rk all the way up to R sub n is less than or equal R sub n prime. So I have a less than or equal situation on the right, equals to the left, and definitely less than right here. And and uh, now I want to show that I can I can do the rotation. So the, the idea will be simply to say that there's a rotation that will increase Rk. Um, and, and 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 keep it less than or equal R k prime. So if I can find some tree, if, if if I can do a rotation here, that'll increase R k, but it won't change any of the other. Remember, a rotation only changes one of the r's at a time. So so I, so if I find a rotation, so so I'll, I'll do a rotation at this node, wherever it is. Um, I'll, I'll want to prove that it has a that its uh, parent is to, is is a right parent. That this is that that k node k has to be a left uh, child. Of its parent, and that if I do a rotation at k, bring it up, then the new value that it has will be less than or equal to r k prime. And and in, if I can do that, 
Um, well, then I've gotten closer. I, I've, I've rotated this one. I've gotten closer to this one because something increased. And so I can keep on repeating this over and over again. Eventually, I get there. Okay. So, so, so this is the, the crucial step is saying that if I get a rotation, then I made progress. And this progress, you know, I, I can't, uh, this can't go on forever because these are finite numbers. And, and uh, so, so, okay, so that's the way it works. Now, um, so, so if we look at the, uh, at, at the right encoding, um, it turns out <coughs> that, um, uh, well, I have to show that, uh, as I said, that, that K, node K, um, it is, uh, that I could do a rotation there. I mean, I have this node, the kth node in symmetric order, and, there's, and, and it looks like this. And then it's got, I want to show that it has a parent up here and, uh, so that I can do a rotation. And then there will be a certain number of, of, of uh, nodes here. This will be um, um, R of, um, of um, well, let's call it L. L is equal to, um, you see, what's the, what node is this? What is the Lth node? If this is node, the kth node. The right subtree here is, um, has RK nodes in it. So L is equal to K plus R sub K <coughs> plus 1. Or is it, if, if RK is 0, that means there's nobody here. Then L, yeah, that's, yeah. So L is, is K plus RK plus 1. It's the, and uh, so, so if we look at it in the sequence uh, form, um, R, R, RK is sitting here, and we, and we draw, draw an arrow over the next R sub K nodes. And then R sub L is the node that follows after it in the, in the sequence. I think this, is, this geometric picture is the easier, way, the easier way to look at it. So I've got, um, so, so I've got this kind of a picture. Well, um, now if I do a rotation, then at at k, I'm, I'm not going to write out the proof, Bob, but it's it's easy for you to to get to to uh, find by yourself if you if you do it. But it follows from conditions one and two. Um, so uh, remember, condition two said that if, as I draw this arrow in here, everybody inside the box is 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 another sequence that satisfies conditions one and two, but with the size of the subtree. This this, this sequence here represents some subtree. Um, so now, um, uh, okay. The fact that our, that uh, the fact that I, I, I never used I never used this. I never used the fact that R K prime is is, is a larger value here. Um, uh, no, that R K prime is another tree that, that actually works, and it, and it's bigger. R K prime is bigger than R K. So so the arrow coming out of the second one shoots out to the right. So that means there's an enclosing box out here uh, that, that is the, 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 uh, the, there's a constraint on how big R, R sub K can get. And that constraint is, is not tight when I, when I draw this arrow because R K prime also meets the constraint. R K prime satisfies this condition too. So R K prime can't be, uh, it, it, I mean, R K can't be, uh, uh, too large, and, there, and therefore R L, which which sits inside this box, is also under the same constraint. That's going to be the that's going to be the key that that, that proves that there is a, that there is a node to, um, above it. the the only no, the only nodes that don't have a, a right that, that whose whose parent is not to the right are the ones uh, for which when you draw the arrow the arrow went as far as it could go. So if there's if there's another arrow above it, that the, the arrow goes all the way. To the, to the right. If, if the arrow comes down like this, then there's some. Then then, then this guy's going to be a parent of, of of this subtree. But if it comes all the way to the right, then then uh, um, th then it doesn't have a parent. In the subtree. So so that, um, that's that's the idea that this this value here r sub l is is known to be not too large. It's you know, because r r k prime um, uh, uh, puts a bound on this. This this guy can be at most R K prime minus one, R K prime minus two. This can be at most R K prime minus R K plus one. And so when you put the whole thing together you do get in fact the 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 uh, exactly the inequality that you need. Okay. That proves the theorem, but now um, uh, let's try to in intuit it and, and and figure out what it means. Uh, so for example, I've drawn all the, um, here I've got a picture that shows you 
all the trees when n equals 4. Uh, n equals 4, um, so, so I have, the, I have uh, you know, 3, 2, 1, 0 is the, is the largest uh, uh, tree that you can get. That's 3, 2, 1, 0. That's the, that's the tree that that's, um, you can't rotate anymore. This is the only one that, that you can't rotate from. And at the bottom here, 0, 0, 0, 0. This, this is the um, extreme, 0, 0, 0, 0. That you can, the only thing you can do is rotate. <coughs> so, so this is the bottom element, the very smallest. This is the largest. This is the top element. And then, uh, since I have four numbers, but the last number is always 0, uh, I can draw them in three dimensions. Um, I can, the other three, so, so you, can use, you, can, you can imagine that this is a, a three-dimensional picture here. Um, with, and so I, I gave the x and y and z coordinates. Um, and, uh, and going up is uh, a rotation. Or going up in any, in any either x, y, or z direction is a rotation. So, so, so we can go from this tree uh, to either the 1, 0, 0, 0, the 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay. So the 14, um, the 14 trees are now encoded by strings of, of the by the right subtrees here. Let's think of an analogy. Um, imagine another lattice. It's 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 uh, um, it's easier to think of. Uh, consider all the divisors of of uh, 360. So 360, if I if I done this right, is two cubed times three squared times five. Um, 8 times 5 is 40 times 9, yeah. And, and so if, now, now the 5 to the first power. So, so all the divisors of, um, of 360, we can, we can encode them by how many 2s are in them, 3s are in them, and 5s are, are in them. So the divisors of 360 uh, can be represented as a sequence R1, R2, R3, till, uh, or R2, R, well, anyway, three numbers. Where the first one is 0, 1, 2, or 3. The next one is... 0, 1, or 2 for how many 3s there are and how many 5s are 0 or 1. So um, uh, we would get a picture something like that, but it would be, it would be a complete um, uh, brick. Um, uh, so um, then I draw up here um, the corresponding thing for when, when you have a multiple of 5. Um, so it gives you, uh, you know, so I get... Um, Something like this. Uh, did I do it? Did I blow it? It's not too bad. This is going to be the top of the brick, and then we got vertical lines going down. So, so there's um, there's, there's a grid here: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. So this would be zero, 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 zero again. Uh, zero, one, zero, zero. This would be one, zero, 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 and then up here is zero, zero, one. Forget the last component. Excuse me. And uh, at the top, at the very top is three, two, one. Okay, it's a similar thing, but we have all all possible coordinates here. Here, here it's a sparse thing. We we have to leave out the coordinates that don't satisfy conditions one and two. All right. So so uh, this is a lattice. In fact, that might be why they started calling them lattices in the first place, because this is like a you know this looks looks like this is all the lattice points in a um, in a uh, solid. And um, uh, in the, when we talk about uh, two numbers that are divisors of 360, we talk about their greatest common divisor, their least common multiple. The greatest common divisor we obtain by taking minimum component-wise, how many powers of 2 divide the thing, how many powers of 3, and so on. The least common multiple we take max component-wise. Now, now, in this case, if we take, uh, but what does it mean when you, in this case, we, we got only a part of that brick, so in this lattice, um, what happens when we uh, when we want to take the uh, uh, the join of two trees, the the the, uh, uh, the corresponding thing to least common multiple or the or the uh, least upper bound? Um, and the answer is well, you take the max component wise, but then you have to go up. But that that, that doesn't necessarily satisfy conditions one and two. So then you have to find. Um, uh, all, but you look at all the things that do satisfy conditions one and two, and you find the smallest of those. You take the minimum of all of them, component-wise. So, so, so you take the set of all of the guys who, 
who um, are greater than or equal to the, the max uh, component wise, and take the intersection of all those and, and uh, you know, the minimum of all those, and that gives you the, 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 the value. I told you another way to get it by, by left subtrees, which is, which is faster, but this is, uh, this is another way to, to, to do it. So, 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 it, so if you have two, two trees and you want to take their, their uh, least, you want to get their least upper bound, well, you can, you can look at the max component wise and see if it, see if it appears here. If it doesn't appear here, well, you've got to go up to something that does. But the, the, the least one that does uh, will be unique. There won't be two that are that uh, that are uh, that are there. Okay, so that that's because it's a lattice, and and uh, the proof is by using the the other calculation by means of uh, left subtrees. Now, um, <clears throat> so uh, in some ways, this is okay. Now, uh, this analogy might give you the wrong idea about trees, because the the lattice of divisors is a distributive lattice. It satisfies the distributive law between. Uh, 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 lubs and globes, um, but uh, this is not a distributive lattice. This, la this lattice does not satisfy the, the distributive law between least upper bound and greatest lower bound. In fact, I, I think that this that the lattices you get from binary trees are probably the most interesting lattices that are not distributed. And, and you know, for textbook examples, this is the this would be the I think the, the best of, of all the lattices that you that that, that, that are not uh, distributed. This one will be be the one that has the most neat property. Um, now, <clears throat> uh, other things to, to uh, observe here is that uh, um, if you add, to, add the numbers here, the sum of all the r's, um, in a distributive lattice, the sum of all the components is, is, the, is uh, it turns out to be the distance to 0, 0, 0. That every time you go Every time you take a step, uh, you increase by one the sum of the components. So this three, two, one here is is six steps away from zero, zero, zero. Uh, and by all paths, whatever path you take, it, it, you know you always go down by exactly one. But in a non-distributive lattice, that doesn't happen. But the sum of these numbers does have an interpretation. It's the length of the longest path to zero, 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 because you can always you can see that if you if you pick off the if, if you pick off the, the numbers uh, from the right to the left, so 3, 2, 1 will go to 3, 2, 0, 0. Got to sit here. Here it is. And then 3, 2, 0, 0 to 3, 1, 0, then into here, and then down here. There, there's always a, for, from, and this, is, this was true for, for any tree. If I do the rotations in a, in, in a dumb way, I can, do, I can rotate it so that exactly one of the R's goes down by one. The rightmost R that's non-zero goes down by one each, each time. So that's an interpretation of the sum of them. But now the the, um, um, the the distance to zero 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 is another thing that's easy to characterize, and it's and you can do this in terms of the number of blocks of uh, uh, top level blocks here. Now, but, but when I say top level block, I mean when I draw an arrow, I I I group these two together, and so there are three top level blocks here. If I had zero zero zero. That would be three, three. Zero by itself is a block, but then if I have a one zero, this would this would combine it and so on. This has four blocks. If there are k blocks, uh, the number of uh, the distance to zero is um, n minus k, and um, it's obvious because every rotation. Um, if we look at, at rotations in terms of blocks, it's very, it's 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 easy to interpret it. Um, uh, <coughs> Namely, I had uh, a rotation w which had um, the value Q was sitting here, and then that was that was drawn over a, a block. And then I had an R here, and that was drawn over another block. That was before the rotation, and then this this sits inside some some larger some larger encoding. This was before the rotation. After the rotation, what happened? I got Q plus R plus one, um, and so everything else stayed the same inside, but the but the, but the number of blocks decreased by one. And so every time you do a rotation, um, you increase, you uh, decrease the number of blocks by one, unless this is already in, living inside of some other block, in which case total number of blocks stays the same. So, the, so if you've got if you've got three blocks, you start out with n blocks, and, and you, if you end up with three blocks, uh, the, you could do it in n minus three steps because each time you uh, you lose one block. So, so it's it's easy to see the distance to zero is the number of blocks in this, which is also the the path along along the subtree. 
So, so the shortest distance from any place to zero is at most n minus one. Another thing you can notice in this picture is that every, every uh, vertex has degree n. There's always n things. Uh, there's the up degree and the down degree. But the sum of the, uh, uh, the up degree is you know, going, increasing x, y, z, and the down degree is the other way. But uh, the sum is always 3. And that's true in general. The sum is always n. Uh, if, if I would look at this, at this construction, and that's because, uh, I'm sorry, n minus 1. And uh, that's because there are n minus 1 uh, uh, nodes that aren't the root. Uh, and so you can do a rotation at any of those. It'll either be a left rotation or a right rotation. Um, now, uh, when you talk about lattices, it gives you extra, extra uh, intuitions and things that you can do about, about trees that, that otherwise you couldn't do. I mean, you might say, what's the good of all this? And, and uh, uh, people talk, for example, we have prime numbers in, um, uh, uh, when we, and, and for the divisors, uh, it, uh, we can uh, uh, talk about the, the, um, <coughs> the join irreducibles and the meet irreducibles, which correspond to powers of primes in the case of, of divisor lattice. Um, so the same, so, so these are uh, uh, the, the, the nodes that I've, I've checked here. This is, this would correspond to two, four, eight. This would be three, nine. This would be five. Those are divisors. If I know how many times these divisors divide a number, then I can figure out, uh, uh, I mean, for two numbers, then I can figure out their, their GCD. Um, the same thing holds in, in a lattice. That is, there's a kind of a factorization theorem in a lattice that says that any, uh, we, in the case of trees, this would say that any tree can be written as the join of join irreducible trees. And any tree can be written as the meat of meat irreducible trees. So what are the join irreducible trees? The join irreducible trees are, are the ones that have non-zero in exactly one component, exactly as as there. So, so here's a join irreducible tree. Um, these are the join irreducible trees. Um, now, the meat irreducible trees are. There's also six meat irreducible trees, and, and what you and what you do is you start out with. Uh, um, let, let me. This is too small an example to uh, to illustrate it. So let's take a, a larger. Suppose I have uh, seven nodes, and I start out with six. What, then uh, n minus one all the way down. This would be the the top element of the lattice, and and I and then I I take um, uh, some subinterval and I zap it, which means I decrease it down as small as I can. I, I decrease it so that it ends with zero. Uh, and um, and all the things that you get by zapping, those are the the meat irreducibles, and so I can represent. I can represent an arbitrary tree like this one as the meat of meat irreducible. So the prime factors of this tree, in a sense, uh, are the things I would get by by zapping. Um, uh, I, I could take uh, this is this is one. Two, this is uh, eight seven six five four three two one zero, and if, but then here I I zap uh, I zap here. So that this gives me a one zero seven six five four three two one zero. And then here I'm going to get um, seven six five four. I think uh, three one zero zero. I just have to zap there, here, and here. And now I take the minimum of these component-wise. I get my one zero one zero three two. So 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 the, so the meat of these three trees is the minimum is this one. And uh, so in in some sense this is a a prime factorization of the trees. So, so now it gives us another way to look at trees, and we can we can think about uh, uh, operations about binary trees in a way that would have, would have not been clear before. One last thing I want to mention is uh, uh, that um, it's been uh, is that uh, a lot of people want. Uh, oh, oh yeah, is the is the interpretation in terms of triangulations of polygons. Um, so there's a there's a the number of binary trees is Catalan number. Uh, the there are five there are, there are 14 here for example and and with, with three nodes there are five, with two nodes there are two so it goes one two five 14 42 very famous sequence, and uh, the reason it's famous is that there are some 80 different 
common toil problems known that all use that they all have Catalyte numbers as a solution as to how many ways there are to do it. And so for every one of these interpretations, there's a corresponding notation, or a thing corresponding to the associative law, corresponding to the, no, the idea of a rotation. Um, uh, when, you, when you put it in, in, the, um, in, in that interpretation, in that combinatorial interpretation. And one of the nicest uh, combinatorial interpretations is uh, in terms of polygons, where, we, where we, talk, we talk about triangulation of a polygon. This is one triangulation of a polygon. Um, if, the, if the vertices of the polygon are A, B, C, are, 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 if, we, if we call the sides, um, and give, give them letters, and then, and then we, we, leave, we have the base and we leave it off, um, then we can, uh, we can get a binary tree in the following way. We, we multiply B by C, that, um, and so, so that's B, C here. <clears throat> then we take that and we multiply by A. That gives us this line. So each diagonal line corresponds to a, a node in the tree. Um, then here's a product of D times E. And then if we multiply that by F, we get this one. And then finally, this, this is the, the connection. So, the, so there's, a, there's a correspondence between putting the diagonals in a polygon uh, so you have triangles left and a binary tree. Um, and uh, the, I, uh, the, uh, if, you, if you see say, well, what's a rotation in this case? Well, it, it just turns out to erasing one of the, one of the, tri one of the diagonals and putting in the other one, uh, and that's called a flip operation. And people, so who, people who do computational geometry, triangulations are very important in numerical analysis. And uh, but uh, a lot of operations are based on this flip operation inside of uh, inside of things. And there's a there's a, a right flip and a left flip depending on whether the node that you're flipping is uh, uh, or the diagonal is sort of cut, cutting from left to right or right to left. So so um, uh, you get a lattice um, of of polygons. Uh, triangulations, and uh, uh, if we if we now ignore the difference between, between left and right and just look at this as a graph, uh, undirected graph, this is a graph where every vertex has degree n minus one, and um, uh, one of the uh, uh, important questions that have been studied, for example, in connection with the, with something called splay trees, is the minimum number of rotations to get from one tree to another. That's the distance in this graph. Um, and uh, the distance, since we know we can get from anything to zero and back again by uh, in, two, in n minus one steps, so so two n minus two is a is, is a bound. But there was a uh, there's a there's a, a paper that I just started reading a, uh, a couple hours ago by by Slater, Tarjan, and Thurston, uh, where they they um, well, they proved first by a very nice simple argument that. Um, 2n minus 6 is 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 uh, always an upper bound as long as n is is at least is greater than 10. Um, uh, it, uh, so if you have a, a uh, n is, is is 11 or more, uh, you can always get from any tree to any other in 2n minus 6 rotations at most. And then they prove by an incredibly complicated argument that uh, for all uh, uh, for, for for infinitely many cases. This bound is tight. That there are that, that for infinitely many values of n, there are trees with n nodes that are exactly two n minus six apart in this graph, and uh, they prove it for all n of the form ten times the perfect square, uh, uh, provided that this is this number is greater than um, uh, two to the sixtieth uh, or something like that. Uh, so so uh, it's been proved that there are infinitely many cases, but uh, but uh, they conjecture that it's true for all n greater than 10. And, uh, and it's known up to n, n equals 20 by, by calculation that, the, that the, the diameter of this graph is, is 2n minus 6 in all those cases. So there's got to be, um, there's gotta be a, a, a combinatorial proof of this. And they use hyperbolic geometry. If anybody knows Thurston, they, you're not surprised that that's the way he would do it. And um, what I suspect, what I suspect uh, might be uh, uh, no, uh, um, nodes that are that are maximally far apart uh, are like this. If you do a triangulation like this in a polygon, in one polygon, and then you do a corresponding one like this, cutting across it in the other, then it seems to me that that's going to take a lot of flips to get from one to the other. But uh, uh, proving pr proving it is it might be, might be difficult. 
Yeah. That, um, so, so my to summarize that anyway, this ha having this this lattice theory um, knowledge is going to, I think, give us more add, add yet more to our intuition about binary trees, and it's a it's a, it's a, one of these nice facts to know that. Uh, that the that the set of all binary trees uh, actually has a has an algebraic lattice structure, and that uh, by looking further at this and thinking about the prime factorizations and other things, we we uh, can can see new things about trees that we didn't see before, and this might uh, uh, be just the thing we need to solve the next problem we need to solve with with respect to binary trees. Who knows? Okay. That's it. <laughs>